Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land Place of Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. I do not know how many runs I have left in me waiting for Mysterious Paper to show up, but we've been, dude, the post-it notes are so, so close to completion. Trying to knock out Eve Greedier. That'll be the final Greedier run we ever have to do. We can't afford to take this. Not only afford to take it, we're happy to take it. Check this out. Little haunt. Is there a, ooh, I'm very happy with the way that this looks right now. Just, I, I always ask for the same thing here, but just give me sin robes. Wouldn't it be easier if you just gave me sin robes here? The item I'm specifically asking you for? Demon baby. It's not bad, actually. I'm not against it. So I'm gonna do things this way. We got the strength card. I'm not gonna use the strength card until the deal with the devil. We got tinted rocks abound. 5.86 damage. It's not stellar, but it's more than enough for the first floor. I'm feeling pretty good about this run. Mind you, I felt really good about the last two runs. Keep in mind we got Polyphemus so early on the last run. It's still, I mean, I don't know how close we were to death. Things got a little spooky on that last run. This feels like a run where we have more than 5.86 damage. I wouldn't say we have, you know, 18 like we had immediately on our last run, but... So far, so good. Let's put it that way. So for now, I'm trying to think. Where do we go from here on this run? I think because it's our last... Well, next to uh, the Lost, I guess I should say. Keep in mind, that's still got to show up. But um, What would I like to see? Why not the D-Infinity? We unlocked it. Let's get weird. I can get weird, Mama. Dr. Evil. Austin Powers 2. You know, I gotta s oh, nice, Someone, something blew up that Tinted Rock. I gotta say, you know, I still to this day think Austin Powers 1 is a comedy classic. That lampoons in like Flint, James Bond movies from the, you know, 1960s, 70s, and 80s, while also having its own unique, sort of good-hearted charm, strangely enough. Where they lost the plot is when they started introducing the Austin Powers extended universe that nobody cares about. I don't care about Dr. Evil and Frau having a relationship, okay? I don't care about Scott Evil very, like, basically out of nowhere becoming a supervillain. It doesn't make any sense. Just stick to the jokes, funny man. Why you gotta make it all weird with the story stuff? Okay, good deal with the devil. I've spitballed enough. Yo, very good deal with the devil. We do need HP, though. Let me think. Let me hydrate a little. Aura is a lovely item. It didn't uh, solve our HP-related problems immediately. You were probably already aware of that. However, it is, like, it's pretty great. The one negative here is that our... Rate of Fire did get worse with the pickup of, uh, ugh. Ugh. It did get worse with the pickup of, uh, Death's Touch. That's okay. Excuse me, why did Jesus Juice just give us, uh, 0 0.34 damage up? Seems a little busted. This item's supposed to be good. I said it last run or two runs ago. Said to myself, well, you were listening, you were here. I said, Jesus Juice, that's an item I always underrate. And then when it shows up, it's very enjoyable. I was wrong. Apparently, it's based on uh, percentage based damage or something like that. It, it, Jesus Juice goes, oh, hey, this guy's got too much damage already. Thanks to Death Touch, I don't need to do my job anymore. Thanks a lot, Jesus Juice. Really appreciate it. Okay, that's a bad trip. I thought to myself, self, the first pill was amnesia. How bad could the next pill be? The answer is they are independent. We should not have just let it fly like that. For real, I kind of look at this and I say, you know what? We should pop the strength card to stay alive on this room. But we could also pop the strength card and get a free deal with the devil. That sounds much cooler. We are going to need to buy HP, though. By the way, why am I sticking with uh, 
The bottle of pills? Lord knows I would prefer not to. <laughs> but it is better uh, than the razor blade for right now. Do I want to have two items? You know what? No. I'm going to I'm going to really throw caution to the wind. You're going to bring me back. I can already feel it. The other one's amnesia, so you better be good. So close to greatness, but actually terrible. Um, okay, hear, hear me out here. We might as well grab this. Delirium became a bomb and blew me up. <laughs> All right, I'm dumb. No, you know what? I don't do that anymore. I'm too, uh, too long in the tooth to enjoy a single range upgrade run. I'm sorry to tell you. It's not my speed. Let's take a look. What do we got going on in here? Real talk. A mama mega for seven cents. It piques my interest. I got to admit. But I think instead, just be cool. I'm going to pop the razor blade. Get a nice damage bonus for this floor. And then just never, ever take damage. There's nothing that says, you know... Your run has to be amazing right from the get-go. Sure, we got an HP upgrade. We should look at that as a positive, even though it's unfilled. It's very good to have that HP upgrade so we can trade it for something more concrete on a deal with the devil. You know, it's devil fuel. I do think we had a potentially okay run there, but, ah, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out right. Also, maybe shouldn't have been so beholden to the pills. At some point... You know, I've already signed off from some of the more dubious items in the game for the most part. I no longer take soy milk out of a misplaced sense of pride. I no longer uh, take Strange Attractor every time, Tiny Planet, etc. But I still, I, I'm beholden for whatever reason, to, you know, a pill shows up. I gotta know what's in it. It's the loot box mentality. I need to know. Maybe the game gave me a tears upgrade I'm not taking advantage of. Other Isaac players, a lot of them don't take pills. It's not necessarily that there's more bad pills than good pills. It's that the wrong pill at the wrong time can basically ruin your run, you know? Any Isaac run that makes it a certain distance is pretty likely to win. But if, if something happens to it in the albumen, that's where things go a little spotty. But, you know, we had fun with it. We got aggressive, we had fun with it. I'm still a little cheesed off about that Jesus Juice pickup, though. Really? 0.34 damage? Like, what did I do to deserve that? I thought I had, you know, lived a relatively okay life. Pe treat the people around me with respect, by and large. It's where we have the Larry David Curb Your Enthusiasm Season 5 sort of moment where we remember all the anecdotes we've told about people slightly misbehaving in public. Don't do it. Please, please. Oh, thank God. Dead Bird, you did more than your part there. And I gotta say, Dead Bird versus Ragman, I like my odds. Keep in mind, please, we are not actually at the level of damage it looks like we're at. I know that sounds like a ridiculous statement. Um, we're only at this level of damage because we were able to use Razor Blade once. That might not be a recurring thing. You know, we have no means to regenerate HP, so we gotta buy it at all times. Many, many plausible situations where we will not be able to make that happen. Maybe there's none for sale. Maybe we can't afford it. Maybe there's an item we'd prefer to have. You know, you get the idea. So, you know, we really, really want to amp up our current situation. The mark is beautiful. KMB in conception is very tempting, but I'm gonna say no to it for now in the interest of keeping ourselves afloat. Yeah. Early on is the right time to get that item, but I just don't think it uh, just don't think it works here. So we'll grab this. Speed upgrade. Again, I wanna say tempting. As good as Tammy's head could be. I'm like looking at blood rights too, but okay, fair enough. As good as Tammy's head could be, no, it's not the right time. You got to reevaluate yourself in these situations. You know, this is not the right time for us to take Tammy's head, though it pains me a great deal. Speedball, good pickup. Bone hearts. I actually don't know. 
But I believe that these bone hearts do not apply uh, to Whore of Babylon. So I think we can get a bunch of HP basically for free. Don't quote me on that just yet, but I, I do believe that to be the case. All right, 8.16 damage. So we were able to kind of reenact the last floor with some slightly improved statistics. Certainly we didn't pick up anything that we're like, oh, we win, but it's nice. It's a nice gentle climb upwards, you know? It's like the ski lift up to the bunny hill. You ever take a ski lift before? If you never have, if you have a, a problem with heights, it can be a little spooky, for real. You know? You're exposed. You're sitting in a chair. The chair doesn't even feel strong. Let me put it this way. It is not a Herman Miller. It's probably like a Bombardier. Either way. Oop. There's a little bar that you can choose whether or not to put down. And you know what? Let me tell you something, okay? If you're scared of airplanes, you have service staff on airplanes that are there to help you. You go, I'm scared. They go, okay, get over. Here's some peanuts. You know, at least you got something. On the freaking uh, ski lift, you got nothing, dude. You got, like, literally, you, you suck at skiing. You go to the ski lift. You pilot yourself to the front. You got two seconds. The chair hits you in the back of the legs, forces you down into a seat, and then you just struggle with the bar. Oh, no, don't drop the poles, though. Oh, my goggles fogged up, you know? Okay, so, yes, I'm a nerd. You got me. But still. I did want to... I haven't thought about this story in a while. I probably means I probably haven't told it in a while. I used to be flight anxious. I've told that story many, many times. Um, but more than just using... Used to being flight anxious... First time I ever flew was 2010. Um, I was 21 years old. Sheltered upbringing. By the way, both of my parents were very excited. They had flown in the 80s for various field trips. My mom went to the Yukon when she was uh, in high school. My dad, um, on, on hockey trips, had, had flown around a little bit. When you're young, you don't understand. Things are exciting. You know, you get on an airplane, ooh, cool, you know? As an adult, it's different. They were like, man, what a feeling when you take off is so good. Man. It, like, it's very exciting. It's a miracle. And it is, but still. When we got on the flight, they were like, I hate this. And I was like, I know. <laughs> I hate it too. You told me it was going to be fun. Turns out we've all got something to lose. When you guys were teenagers, it's just more like, well, if we die, at least we died on the best trip of our lives. Anyway. One second. Let me, let me check this real quick. See what we got. Mm, I don't think we can take it. In hindsight, I kind of wish I took the guppy item, but I, I still think this was probably right, even though it pains me. So, Whore Babylon. Still active. Still active. I'm going to get a little aggro here. I'll take this and just turn it into... You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get real wild. We got a cube of meat. How strange. How droll. Amnesia. Okay. Free exit, at least. Um, I will take Iron Bar just for a little bit of raw damage. Now I desperately want to be able to take um, Sad Onion, but we can't. Anyway, second time I flew. So the first time, you know, it's whatever. All I'll say for flight nerds, which I am not really, but... Flying into... McCarran International Airport in Las Vegas. You know, there's mountains. It's, it's in a basin, basically. Or a valley, rather. Um, so, the average flight, if your first flight was, dare I say, coast to coast to LA to Chicago, baby. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, we, we pooped on our pee. Um, you may well... Oh, well, just wait a moment here. Hello. What you got there? It's a Japanese book. So for the food, everything is yours, but save me one yam tempura roll. Did you eat already? No, I have a yam tempura roll in there. So I did. Said everything is mine. Everything is yours except the yam tempura roll. I ate my chicken karage. You're only having a karage and a roll. Karage and roll. That's correct. Why? I think it's. I think it's enough. It was a large karage. Razor blade, please don't take my bone heart. Lovely. Um, this is beautiful. Stats are great now. Ah, don't hit me though. You almost hit me there. Okay, so first time I flew. 
Las Vegas is a little rocky, is all I'm saying. It's a fast descent. You know, most other flights are a little bit more pedestrian unless you live in, like, you know, Kathmandu International Airport. That's not an arbitrary choice. Anyone who's played Flight Simulator 10 knows it's nestled between the freaking mountains. Or that one airport that's weirdly, like, right on the beach. Anyway, the point is, you know the one. It's in the Caribbean somewhere. Um, my second flights ever were when I went to Korea. So I flew, uh, Toronto to Chicago, baby. Western Mail. On the flight from Chicago to Toronto, we were taxiing, or from Toronto to Chicago, I should say. We were taxiing out, and the uh, lady, I don't know, she's maybe like five or six rows in front of me, starts hyperventilating. Now, keep in mind, this is the third time I've ever been on an airplane before in my life. I have no idea if this is a common occurrence or if this never happens. Um, anyway, she starts like hyperventilating. <laughs> Super anxious. I do feel bad for her. Simultaneously, she is... It's not that I have no compassion. Don't gaslight me like that. But she is holding up, you know, hundreds of people who have perhaps connections to get 18 hours away and will be flying for the next day and a half. Either way, the flight attendant comes and, like, kneels down beside her and goes, like, is everything okay? And she's going, like, I can't really hear everything. But she's going, like, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can do it. And the flight attendant's like, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> I'm adding my own poetic license here to some extent. I imagine the flight attendant is going, you don't have to do anything, you just have to sit down. <laughs> just stay seated, you got the easy job. We'll handle all the tough stuff. Anyway, long story short, um, after, you know, a little bit of taxi delay, the, uh, the passenger goes, you know what, I don't, I really don't think I should be on this airplane. And, uh... So they, uh, they taxied back to the jetway, back to the airport, let her off the airplane, took off without her, and you know it's really going to creep you guys out. But what was super messed up is that the plane, it, it, it went down. And it, every... <laughs> Don't laugh! <laughs> the, it, it, no, it is, it is true. The plane went down somewhere over uh, Cook County, Illinois. One of the engines went out and... Uh, crashed into a, an abandoned field near Peoria, Illinois, and, and everybody, all souls on board, perished. It's true, including me, who was sitting six rows back of the woman who evacuated the plane. <laughs> no, we, we flew, it was a normal flight, we flew when we landed. It was not, it was, you know, I have to imagine, I mean, I feel bad for her, you know, I know other people that have flight anxiety, it's rough. But, and this is, I mean this with all human compassion that I've ever mustered in my entire life. I get that for her, it's like a big moment where she's going to face her fears and all that. And I'm not besmirching her effort there, getting to the airport, getting on the plane, which I'm sure was a tough ordeal for her. But once you strap into that plane, you're in. If you're going mean, to, it's, it's out of her control, I'm sure. But still, it is it, at the risk of sounding like the world's coldest person. It's a little selfish. If you even think there's a one in four chance. And it, it's a little selfish if you even think there's a one in four chance that you're going to be like, sorry, the whole plane with 300 people on it has to turn around because I'm scared. It's a little selfish. You should be booking a private... You should be booking a private plane to face your fear. Why do... Why do 300 people have to be inconvenienced just so that you can have your little uh, how Stella got her groove back moment? That's not, that's not true. All right, Kate, you, you can argue the opposite. What, what do you think about the subject? I was thinking like that, but then you had the flight anxiety. Yeah. And so I was like, I feel bad for my husband. So... You know what? If it has to be even for one person, there there should be a sacrifice. That needs See, that's very noble, but I think if you were like, "Hey, if I miss my connection, I'm going to be stranded in O'Hare International Airport for 8 hours because of her anxiety." You might be a little bit more callous. Yeah, but you know, I got to think that person is Ryan. It's old me though. I got over it. I wanted to get off the it's from one flight. Oh my god, it's the worst paper. <laughs> <laughs> it's from one flight anxious person to another. There have been many times I sat in the airplane and white I knuckled. and I see yeah well, totally white knuckled and I said to myself it's going down I gotta get off this plane I just had a premonition this thing's gonna go down you know what I did I kept my mouth shut 
took off, got into the sky, I'm definitely going to die. Yeah, but you can't force that upon other people. Then she shouldn't be flying. No. She wasn't flying anyway. You know, maybe to the next day she will feel better. That I will give you. There's a, nobody's beyond salvation. <laughs> but you know, you know how you help other people to get over their anxiety. Mm. You tell them my story. What's your oh your story about how you uh, used to never have flight anxiety, but then what? No. you uh, I, don't, I still don't have anxiety. Well, sometimes a little. Dude, what are you talking uh -oh. about? I, no, you're just. Well, hold on, Kate. I'm getting distracted. <laughs> so, Kate's Kate's story is that she and her parents flew uh, on a domestic flight from the United no. States. Okay, is Canada the U.S.? This is irrelevant. It wasn't a long flight, is the thing, or at least it was. See, is it doesn't matter. The point is, they were on this flight, it took off, and then they started to smell some delicious barbecue. And then they said, ooh, there must be a meal on this flight. Barbecue. There, mu there must be said the classic airplane food, barbecue. My bone heart. Um, turns out it was not barbecue. They made an emergency landing in, like, Cincinnati or something like that. Due to engine burning. Yeah, the engine had flamed out. So, here's the thing. The odds of that happening on any particular flight you're on are probably literally like 1 in 10,000. I've never even had anything close to that happen. So if you got flight anxiety, at least like on a logical level, that should help you out. No, it's more like anxiety person versus not anxiety person. Not anxiety person will think, oh, there's barbecue, yum. Yeah. Mm. And then, oh, why are, we, why are we landing? That's not, this is not the right place. And then they go, make the emergency landing. And uh, we are okay, we're not gonna die. It was funny because we didn't realize when, like, we were kind of waiting for the barbecue to be yeah. delivered. And yet, when we made the emergency landing, everyone in my family was confused. But, and and also, everyone on the plane, they were just, like clapping. <laughs> we were like, why are we clapping? Like, we just like landed in a wrong place. Yeah, the stupid, barbecue. stupid pilots landed in the wrong place before we got to have our barbecue. Yeah. What are they thinking? But you know, we were we were not panicking. Our family was waiting for the barbecue that was never delivered. But instead of panicking, which you can, you know, even if you panic, you can't do anything on the airplane. You just kind of like anticipate it for something delicious. So uh, we were stressed out. We were happy, and uh, we were safe. So you would want you would want to be in our shoe instead of like anxious person of like, oh no, we're going down. I'm more offended that no one in your family went through the logical steps of like first off it's an american airline nobody's serving as a complimentary meal that's it's united, <laughs> united. even better maybe united got upgraded today. and then that you thought it would be barbecue like it wasn't the, me it was my sister like they got a some kind of like spit in the back they've got a, a whole hog on they, you, you just come by and take a slice maybe it was a luxury at your leisure yeah. It wasn't me. Why are you keep saying it? It was my I, sister. I'm saying your family. Yeah. I was asleep. So, I was asleep for a whole time. So you gotta take me out of that. Alright, I will take you out of that. My sister and my mom, they got excited for the barbecue, and I was like, what's happening? And they said, they're gonna serve us barbecue. I was like, oh, really? <laughs> I didn't know. They, they, I was like, they were so sure of it. Like, can you not smell the barbecue? Mm. Honestly, they're serving us barbecue. Yeah, what are you, stupid or something? So what do you think, the engine caught on fire? Maybe your sister just loves the smell of burning engines. She didn't know it until then, but now you've awakened like a demon inside of her. She's like, for Thanksgiving, we'll be having a... <laughs> you gotta be nice, we're having Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, we are having... They moved their Thanksgiving dinner for us, which is very nice. But it's also not... I don't want to apologize for it, because who has Thanksgiving dinner on a Thursday? Which is the day of Thanksgiving. I know, like, come on, America. You vote on a Tuesday, you have Thanksgiving on a Thursday. Like, you ever hear of a freaking weekend? Or even Fridays. Yeah, Friday, like, I understand that you get Thursday off, but why are you so eager to do the feast? Just have the feast on the Sunday of the Thanksgiving weekend. It doesn't have to be on the day. 
What was the day that turkeys were founded or something? Doesn't make any sense. Well, you know, still we're getting free You know, I, Kate, I had a, uh, I got a little bit. To pick, pick some bones now? I got a, I got a bone to pick with you. Oh gosh. No, I got a bit to run by you. Okay. Okay. I, by the way, I don't know what the heck I'm gonna do here. Here's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna swing for the freaking fences. Okay. Why is Christmas on December 25th? What, what's the special... Why is it the 25th instead of, you know, like the 26th or the... It's the... It's a very simple question. I'd like you to just provide me with an answer. What? If you don't know the answer, you just tap me on the shoulder and I'll tell you and continue the joke. Oh, okay. I didn't know you were having a joke. And there's a joke a... involved here, yeah. Oh, I see. I do not know. Do you not know? I do not know. So that's the day that Jesus was born. I think I might just try the joke with a more willing participant later. I'm very really confused. <laughs> I, how are you confused? I just asked you a question. I know, obviously. I thought, yeah. I thought it was a trick question. It's not a trick question. I don't, I don't ask trick questions. Mm, don't don't I? Okay, it's the day that the Jesus is born. Okay, what day is Easter? I don't know the third Thursday in every second March, except for the times it is April. You know what's the specialty of Easter? Why is Easter on e when it is? It's because the day that Jesus came back, right? Yeah. Why does that change year to year? Does it make any sense to me? Because it just tied to. So you're not telling, so Jesus did not come back from the dead on like April 6th. He came back from the dead on the third Friday in March. I know, I, I mean. We, we, don't, we don't serve Jesus. We didn't know who he was until like 1900. So. Mm. <laughs> Fair enough. That's not true. Probably not 1900. I don't, I don't know the history of Christianity in uh, in Korea, but yeah. It's got to be later for sure. Yeah, we were we were mostly Buddha until until people said Buddha is not that cool anymore. It's always bothered me. Ah, um, because like, okay, I get it. Christmas, December twenty fifth, the day Jesus was born. Whether you're a believer or a non-believer, at least you know when Christmas is. It's a huge birthday. Yeah, it was the same day every year. But then there's a special day for the day that he came back from the dead. To walk around for three days and be like, check it out. I wasn't bluffing. And then, but that day, it changes every year for for reasons unbeknownst. Wasn't it better though? Cause like you always have long weekends. I would rather have holidays to do that tied to like the every third of Thursday, every third of Friday, or whatever. Cause then you you know you will always get those days off. You know, it sucks when. Like for example, you know how Japan has golden week. Yeah. And it's called it's called golden week because there are three holidays that are tied together. One is birthday, one is children's day, and something blah blah blah. So that changes because it's tied to the date. Mm. And next year is like unfortunate golden week for Japanese people because it starts on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. And Monday. So they're basically getting Thursday off. And that's right, yeah, they lose well, a couple. I, like, I guess on Monday. I see what you're saying. They lose a couple of holidays they otherwise would have had. Exactly. If they were to say, maybe it's, if it starts on Monday, then actually they get the whole week. Yeah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday is not the holiday, but usually they would be like, ah, you know, you, why not? Why not take Friday off? They just kind of put it out there. So it's like, they actually have whole week off. Yeah. But then this time, because the holiday, they are lending on the weekends. Now it's just uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, or something like that. So yeah. It's, it's unfortunate, unfortunate for them. Yeah, I feel very bad for the Japanese people who normally would get four days off, but instead only get two. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I call Earth Day, Children's Day? And bl Cherry Blossom Day, NLSS Team Unity Tuesday, NLSS NLSS. I thought you would say Isaac Mines. Isaac Mines. Well, that, Isaac that's only if it's a Friday or a, <laughs> or the afternoon on a Sunday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Your calendar has no red days. It's all black 
days. From the, the Isaac. Yeah, some right. some days I mercifully get a little vacation to play Slay the Spire. Or maybe Mathis calls me up on his golden telephone and says, Hey, you wanna I wanna bless you with some multiplayer games and I say thank you, sir, thank you. I've been waiting for this call for my whole life. I don't know you're getting those uh, pickaxe. Just notched axe over and over. <laughs> cough cough. Black lung. <laughs> Think I got the black lung, pops. Too much. And here's the thing, the Isaac Mines this week has exclusively been Ultra Hard Challenge, Delir oh. Delirium, Mega Satan. Ah! <laughs> Hoping that the trinket that unlocks the Lost shows up so I don't have to do the freaky Lost unlocks. It's a bad... The conditions in the mine are bad. The canaries are dying. <laughs> Mr. YouTube, though, he's still going, Get back in the hole! Get back in the hole! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh, it's still worth it. <laughs> Is Tomo the bird? Uh, Tomo's the canary? Yeah. There he is right there. Yeah. Hello, hello, Tomo. Does it go like, ah, when it's like mm. time for you to get out? I'm pretty sure Tomo's going, when is this guy going to shut up? You think so? I've been alive for so many years and he never shuts up. <laughs> Man, I don't even want any of these. I'm going to save my money for the next floor. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, for the next floor. I'm screwed. I'm I'm surprised that you're still alive. What are you going to uh what are you going to play in your stream, Kate? Oh shit, I totally forgot about You cannot suppose to swear in my video either. Oh, you crazy. I spelled it differently. She said sheets. Yeah. She's which we also have to do. We got to change the bedding. Exactly. She, that's why she was talking about it. She said, oh, 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 oh sheets. Yeah. Oh, sheets, she said. Oh, sheets. <laughs> Please, God, give me some damage. Oh, my gosh, I forgot. Yeah, I was wondering. I was like, man, she must hate her whatever she's going to play. <laughs> well, you made it home early, so it, it's like nobody has to know. Okay. I'm back to my solitude. I, I apologize, by the way. What have I done to my HP over the course of this run? I've turned it all into... I took 8 HP down to 1 HP. And then I took that 1 HP, turned it into 3 HP, and now I turned it into a bunch of bones. I don't have a good explanation for you, okay? It, you will never see me do this. Thunder thighs for half price. The price is right. Polydactyl, thank you so much for the hanged man. hanged man. I know how to pronounce it, game. You don't need to... Oh, that's right, we can crack into these bad boys now. If we win this run, it'll be a merciful twist of fate. I am looking, and I'm like, dude, I don't know. Here's, here's how mind-effed I am. I'm looking at the fishtail and going yeah baby that's the ticket it spoilers by the way is not the ticket how would that help us at all okay we could this is a judgment call we could pop awas and just go for the fight i actually i'm wavering back and forth but i'm deciding that's probably the wrong play just because we have a chance to get so much money. Well, so much spending power, really. Not really so much money. Um, because there's the half-price item pedestal. Gives us a very real chance to create something beautiful. Come on. With this. Okay, first wave almost over. I, By the way, I recognize there was a win at some point for this run. Where is it gone? I don't know, man. That's the mine owner. Gah! 16 cents. So, you know what? First off, pop this bad boy down. I'll take it. I'll take it. I I really want to take it. I know we have Razor Blade. I think there's a... I think there's a, a choice we make somewhere. Because we don't want to lose our HP for nothing when we could be turning it into Razor Blade damage. 
that would make our life easier overall. But we also don't want to just throw our HP, you know, away when we might need it for HP later. You understand the concern. So I don't know, man. We're like, we're a little anemic here. It's more of an anecdote-focused Isaac run. Which, uh, you know, we can all get down with. You both can't do this at the same time. I'm sorry to inform you. I, there you go. I was just... See, now we got the, the Chris is crossed and the cross is Chris. So I, I, I was being real about that Easter bit, by the way. I could probably look up the history of Easter on Wikipedia, and I will, rest assured, when this episode is over. I just don't understand. If it's a particular day, you know, no one says, hey, here lies, you know, Tom Thompson, born July 3rd, died the third Thursday of each March. Doesn't happen. So I don't know why Easter is constantly a rotating holiday. It's like, if you want to find the day that Jesus rose from the dead, you got to do an algebraic expression. I'm open to the answer to this question, by the way. I hate when people, they're like, oh my god, he's brought up religion, now he's done it. No, it's not even close to being like that. This is, a, this is an agnostic question. I celebrate Easter and I love turkey, okay? I just want to know why we can't just pin down the day. Why do I have to Google it every year? It's like the person who invented Easter has a, an ad-driven website called, like, whenisEaster.com. I don't understand it. We might win now. And that should make you very upset. How do I want to do this? Well, I want to be in Horror Babylon State, which means we need to lose our Red Heart. As a result of our HP, though, I don't think we can lose our Red Heart. This is going to sound busted, but watch. Takes bone hearts instead. I think I'm willing to purge all of my the first two hits of all of my bone hearts to get the 15 damage. Now what happens next? Very, very carefully use Mob the Void. Try to build up your demon hearts. If you ever get over maximum HP, first off, thank your lucky stars. Secondly, keys. I love it. Don't break them. If you don't break the, if you can avoid it, don't break them. Then use some of your spacebar action to generate even more value. Just be cool, just be cool. There's got to be a damage cap on Razor Blade. I don't know what it is. Things are going pretty well so far. Come on. Keys, please. There's a Demon Heart already. Celtic Cross. Very helpful, actually. Keys. You are so beautiful to me with your keys. Yeah. Coast to coast. New York to Chicago, baby. Western Mail. Thank you. Thank you. You know what? 0 0.95 damage. I'm starting to realize. Shouldn't be tossing away HP for that. You jerk. Keys, please. Careful. The next guy doesn't summon that many... Uh, <laughs> he doesn't summon that many minions. If you know what I mean. He's the kind of guy who thinks a minion is a onion-flavored corn snack. You catch my drift, kid? Yeah, that's right. It's film noir dialogue without really making any sense. It's a new bit I'm trying out, you see? Really, you just say see a lot. This bit has a few cousins. One is extra, extra, read all about it. People used to talk like this when they said things about the news, I think. Dead bird, I gotta tell you, I knew shears. You, my friend, are no shears. Come on, with the two luck stat, you're not gonna juice me up with a little bit more demon heart action. I recognize I've been fast and loose with the HP loss.
We don't have a lot of HP. We have a deceptively small amount of HP right now. I have to get close enough to hit him. So the bombs, I think, I, we're, we're codifying our methodology right now. The bombs are where we use oh, our chance to possibly get bone hearts. Or sorry, uh, demon hearts. It's always a risk, but I, I, even though they haven't generated any for us so far, I for real think that's like the only opportunity that we have to get them. I'm trying not to give up. We're a little nose to the grindstone right now, you know what I mean? I really, I mean, what can I say? You know, I looked at that one and I thought we had a, thought we had a chance. Dude, one of these bombs. You son of a gun. One of these bombs is for sure 1,000% going to pay out. I can smell it. Very close to taking a hit there. Okay. Okay. Starting to realize they are never going to pay out. They've been programmed not to pay out. The villainous Tyrone. He doesn't want us to win. He says, this guy's had it too easy lately. Remove the ability to generate extra HP on the Super Greed fight. Yeah, and get rid of the missing poster trinket so he has to do the lost in the most convoluted way possible. I'm sorry, Tyro. This is slanderous. Or libelous. I can't remember. Of course I remember. In print, it's libel. I've seen Spider-Man 1. Can I, can I hit you with a little bit of... No, there is no good news. What I was going to say is we'll be in the Horror of Babylon state soon. I was wrong. We're already in the Horror of Babylon state and have been the whole time. How's that for a twist, M. Night Shyamalan? I still believe that this man will give us a demon heart somewhere down the line maybe not today maybe not tomorrow but soon every day for the rest of our lives shouldn't have done that please my friend do you see the hang time on those shots Dead bird, the ball's in your court now. We've done it! Crow Heart has appeared in the basement. God, I'm lucky. Hey, thanks for watching. Perfect, perfect timing. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. I was a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Of course, follow me on Twitch, which is TV slash Northern Let me know if I want to go live in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya!